I came with something that was very different. Um, craggy, handmade, hand wrought, um, you know, pieces that would really tell the story of the manufacturing, you know, and uh, it was a very different product for the time. Uh, it was sort of um, enlightening, I think, for the Indian design scene because India had been labeled uh, a country of poor quality. And I think that was through a lack of understanding. You know, I think the international buying community went there trying to make their perfect things. And because it's such an incredible handmade process, the pieces always bore that, what I call the telltale sign of the handmade. So, you know, to be able to turn that and say, okay, what's, 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 what's perfect is imperfect. Let's show the file marks. Let's show the fingerprints. Let's show the hammers. Let's show all the things that allow us to be who we are and what they can't be. You know, Mercedes-Benz can't make that. Um, maybe Europe can't make that. India still could, you know, they could do those things that were made one by one by hand and still bore the soulfulness of the maker. You know, and that's what was missing here. You know, there was no one doing that. There was no company harnessing that or embracing that. And, you know, that was, that was the magic for me. You know, the magic of, of really, you know, working with my hands, working with my eye, working with, you know, the skill of these incredible craftspeople, uh, you know, alongside and really creating something different at that point. And, and that was 26 years ago. You know, now we talk about handmade, we talk about organic, we talk about nature inspired, and you know, it, it's so ubiquitous. But back then it was very different. And that was, that was the aha moment for me. Anyone who's creative or thinking uh, is always inspired by things around them. And it could be absolutely anything. Uh, of course, I'm largely inspired by nature, and I always say that nature is my biggest muse. But um, you know, even you know, growing up and spending time in the garden, spending time in our home, you know, being Armenian, my parents entertained a lot, and uh, it was always about food and what we were cooking and how we were serving it, who was coming to dinner. Those uh, family gatherings were like at the core of our family life, and I think you know, highly inspirational for me. You know, I often ponder, you know, as an Armenian growing up in America, you know, what were my sources? And of course, you know, I grew up outside of New York. We were always in galleries, always at museums. But, you know, I like to think um, that as a baby, even growing up and crawling around our carpets and, you know, getting a sense of the natural dyes and the colors and the, the motifs, the geometry, the symbols even, you know, of pomegranates, um, leaves, all of that, for me, I would say, is something that I owe to my heritage and owe to my culture. I think as an artist, we have our own personal hierarchies. You know, like for me, um, before I started making uh, design work, it was you know, somewhere probably um, painting and then architecture and then maybe literature. You know, we have our own personal hierarchies of what we think fine art is and decorative art and you know, the, the performing arts, you know, how we rank things. Uh, in terms of what's the greater art or what's the bigger art. But for me, I find um, that there's art in everything, you know, whether it's you know, how you serve a meal, how you dress, how you speak, how you groom, how you interact with people. They're all art forms. And I think for us to really focus on that and think about how we can make things more beautiful in every aspect of our lives is super inspirational. The first time I was in Armenia, I was a high school student. And I went there, it was 1981. So it was sort of peak Soviet times. Uh, I was so privileged, I think, to be an American and to be able to see a culture so different from my own and to understand Armenia at that time in its history. I've been very lucky to have been able to visit Armenia every decade since then. So to really have seen it go through so many changes throughout the last many decades now and um, you know when I go there now I just feel such uh, such optimism such hope such um, brilliance really you know? what is happening at Tumo is so exciting and so perfect for Armenia right now um, in terms of the great brain uh, power that's in Armenia that suddenly can now access the world you know um, vice versa you know where they can see what's happening globally and where 
the world can also access the talent that's in Armenia. So many of my artist friends, there's so many obstacles that uh, are sort of self-imposed, and I, I would say just to liberate yourself from those. I guess my motto has always been, um, small is beautiful.